the question is PHOR that one twelve previously twenty one. Previously, the course was called, I mean, was the having a call PHY 2105. This is for physics majors and PHY 105 for those who were majoring in math. But after change of the curriculum, then now the course became um, sort of uniform. It became a uniform thing for major and uh, for minor. We all do it in third year. It used to be different because the math majors used to do it in the third year. And then the code had to be in the third year code. Whereas the physics majors would do it. So the meeting times, the meeting times are today, Monday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Tomorrow towards lunch. Then uh, on Thursday, <coughs> from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The, the time hasn't changed from last year's schedule, and I can uh, ask for permission from you. I enjoyed last year for one reason. During this time, sometimes we would start at around 3. Because some, uh, most of them were free, so that we either leave early or extend and cover as much for as possible, but in a relaxed way. And uh, I don't know about you, so if you find that your timetable is is having an allowance here, you could start at three or at four and be able to finish earlier instead of uh, entering your your marathon time. I don't know whether I'm making sense. Yes. So, <clears throat> if there are no questions or plans, anyway. So, no questions about time. We've agreed today, tomorrow, Thursday. And then we shall have practicals during uh, Monday. It is either Monday and when is it? What is the, where is the Thursday area? Monday. Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> now, course outline is always a, a skeleton of what we may or may not cover. So, when I uh, give you a course outline and uh, the The syllabus book is giving something else, don't blame me that I gave you, you know, something which is different. The course outline is just a skeleton and you can choose to have it that way or your way. I guess that is clear. So I will give you a fairly corresponding course outline, but if you want, you can go to the library or the department and get the syllabus book, which shows how many hours a given section of this course takes. And uh, to tell you the truth, no one of you should fail this course. Because it is just a summary of electricity and magnetism. So I should now start giving you the outline and then I can explain uh, time after that. So we shall have a review, a review of electrostatics. As number one, electrostatics. And if you remember very well, here we shall try to look at the use of OSO, use of OSO 
and Laplace's equation and Laplace's equation for solution for solution of uh, simple potential simple potential problems in the three in the three coordinate systems that is in uh, Cartesian in Cartesian spherical and cylindrical coordinates cylindrical coordinates and once we uh, we look at these coordinates we shall move on and say how about when we get boundaries for given two media for example if we have directions and we have two media how shall we know it so we need to know the conditions to apply at a given boundary so we shall also look at boundary conditions for dielectric interfaces for dielectric interfaces Now, the other part is the, uh, another revision of stationary, stationary electric fields. This is similar to the current electricity part we had in electricity and magnetism. You remember when we were covering that part of uh, electricity and magnetism, we only said steady currents and the current electricity. So we shall look at when this state, what produces these electric fields, of course, are the charges. And we want to see if charges earn a point, how do they behave when they are in such a point. And uh, we shall be able to say that charge at a given point of n and r pole is uh, conserved. So we shall say conservation of charge and con and because there is continuity across the boundary, we look at the continuity equation. Then we shall look at electric fields, electric fields in conductors. In conductors. Then we look at uh, calculation of resistance. of resistance of coaxial of coaxial cable once you have resistance you always get ohmic losses ohmic losses and of course once you have all the process, uh, then this bring about power. So we shall also look at power conservation. So we basically we 
we are reviewing, we shall be reviewing, we shall just add a little bit of a uh, few things in our course, but mostly we shall be sort of doing the revision of the trees that we made. Almost. The, the, the bits on the uh, electromagnetic waves is where we shall look at something new and treat it as electromagnetism. But these, you know, beginning parts are basically to make you enjoy. So that will cover almost the bigger part or will help us to finish the part of electricity and magnetism. And then we now look at the magnetism, sorry, of electricity. So we look at the magnetism part by looking at magnetic field laws, field laws, under which we shall be looking at the, the circulation, how these uh, field lines are, are going around. So circulation and flux laws. And then uh, this will be laws on magnetic laws on magnetic flux density B and I will use this R again for the vector representation. The B with an R there instead of something you are used to as a B on top or a B at the bottom or a wave at the bottom I'm going to be using this for this course and I will push you do the same for any other vector you are representing with a single headed arm and then we shall look at uh, forces and the torques Forces and torques on current groups, on current groups, and then we shall also have the uh, after you have this uh, torque on a given group, and the loop is now changing, making a couple. If it moves in these field lines will cut across them and produce an EMF. So we shall also look at the induced EMF. And this induced EMF, we need to know its behavior by following the, uh, or utilizing the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. I first say law. And then, also look at uh, the mutual mutual inductance if we get to have two interacting coils and it is this principle of two interacting coils that you know gave birth to the communication technologies you are using today you are able to use mobile or mobile phone because you are having one coil here producing an electromagnetic field which goes to the station and the station boosts it to another mobile phone and the electromagnetic wave produces on the area of the other phone another induced field which is interpreted by the system of the phone to eventually make a call between two points. And then uh, we shall look at uh, the electromagnetic and then the magnetic vector potential Magnetic vector potential. And finally, on this section, we shall look at uh, electromagnetic electromagnetic induction. So, in the nutshell. We are, after you know, doing this, you, you got the Poisson 
and Laplace's equations when you have the, the, the divergence of E is minus law of epsilon naught. And this was called Poisson's equation. But if you substitute, uh, I think uh, I should have substituted here minus plus V, and then you get the divergence of V being the same as positive that. Uh, and this will be solved in one square. <coughs> so, once you, and of course, since this is a scalar, V is a scalar, you don't need any. Don't anymore. So you have to add squared V being equal to rho of epsilon map, where rho is the volume charge density, and then in places or regions where you don't have any charge for rho is equal to zero, we say that now that squared V will equal to zero, and this gives back to Laplace's equation in electricity and magnetism. And uh, unlike the simple two axis, x, y axis we considered in electricity and magnetism, here we shall be considering the x, y, z, Cartesian. We shall look at the spherical when we take a sphere, take the equator, and take one of the axes along <coughs> perpendicular to this equatorial plane. And then have the other, this is y, and this is x. And then you, you take the angle along the axis. So I'll make sure I go in deep into this when we are doing the course. But I'm lucky that I have mathematicians who have done this. And I have physicists who did mathematical physics. And I guess mathematicians also do compulsory. Mathematical physics 1, 2, and 3. Are there three of them? So I, uh, then boundary conditions, you remember at least something about it, that if you have two dielectrics and you make them come together, in between them, you can now look at the behavior of either charges, electric field lines, or magnetic field lines as they cross from one of the medium uh, of the media to the other, or from one medium to the other. Then, the fourth, the fourth section of this course will be the beginning of actually the electromagnetism. And that is the improvement of Andrea's law, the improvement of uh, Gauss's law, improvement of um, Faraday's law, and all this work was done by none other than Mr. Maxwell. So we shall look at Maxwell's equations. There are four of them. And uh, we shall try to derive these equations. So derivation of the four equations. <coughs> then we shall look at the displacement the displacement uh, current then we look at uh, the equations and solutions in terms of electromagnetic waves equations and solutions in terms of in terms of electromagnetic waves and then we get our these waves move in, in free space. Then the transverse nature, transverse nature 
of electromagnetic waves. And of course, we shall look at uh, the orthogonality, orthogonality of uh, the electric component of the wave, the magnetic component of the wave, and the direction in which the wave is propagated. And uh, the direction vector is the K. So K is the direction vector, I mean propagation vector. We have electric field density, then we have the uh, magnetic flux density. If you remember in electricity and magnetism, we had our magnetic wave horizontal, whereas we had the uh, electric wave being vertical, and that's where you had the E like this, you had the B here, and of course, if it is propagating in this direction, you have the K, if you remember that GIF, that changing photograph that I put on the crystal magnetism that was showing the, the, the wave moving into uh, this sort of a plate and it was disappearing into here with E, uh, e there, E here, and of course, sorry, not as E here, and we did have the K, but the K is along the direction of propagation. Of course, whenever there is uh, an electromagnetic wave, it's, uh, it's deemed to be, or is taken to be a form of light. Uh, light is a form of an electromagnetic wave, and this light can be, or can be made to move in a given, in a given plane. And if you do that, then we say that you have polarized it. I guess in your optics, you learn something of the sort. And uh, that gives us a chance to look at uh, five. That is polarization. Polarization of electromagnetic electromagnetic waves. So we shall look at linear linear circular and elliptical polarization and I can assure you in one of the practicals you will be able to enjoy the equipment about polarization whereby you have a laser beam representing the electromagnetic wave and this laser beam can be made to be or can be made to disappear or turn a bit due to the uh, polarizers. Whenever you have two waves, E and B, because of their interaction together, as they move along the propagation, they carry the energy. The energy per unit area is what we call the pointings vector. So the sixth part of the course is pointing vector, pointing vector in three space. And under this we shall look at plane electromagnetic waves. Plane electromagnetic waves. And uh, look at isotropic, homogeneous, homogeneous, and linear media, and linear media. Media is mediums. Many mediums are called media. 
but maybe it was his wrong grammar. Just using it for a sec. So then we shall look at solution. Solution of wave equations of wave equations in conducting in conducting and non conducting non conducting Maybe. Of course, by this time we now look, we we looked at a chart in the electrostatics. Then after looking at the chart, we looked at what it produces, and it produces electric field lines. Now looked at the behavior of these electric field lines. When these electric field lines are moving, they create a magnetic field. When these charges are moving, they create a magnetic field. Then we look at how these magnetic fields behave in media. After looking at those electric fields, I mean magnetic field lines, which when crossed by a conductor produce uh, an electric uh, current, this current produced can be used for other purposes. That's when we talked about the uh, production of now and generating an electromagnetic wave that goes from one point to another due to mutual inductance. Normally what happens is that if you have to, why a remote is able to change something is that you are sending a signal. But I cannot get the remote and now change a signal of a TV in the hall of residence. I can't. But if I can make my signal so strong, it can reach the hall of residence. That is by boosting. And that's what happened for mostly the cellular phones where you, you have a phone, you call it, it goes to the booster, the booster sends to you. So you have, the phone is called a cellular phone because you have different cells being supplied by different stations. So each what you see, or each tower you see, either of Wari, the Atel, or MTN, whatever, that one is given, is given a particular cell. That's why we call them cellular forms. After producing those waves, we need to we need to know how they are polarized or how they are interfered with. Then we need to know the energy we, uh, which they carry. That's when I talk of the point is back. And then finally, we look at transmission lines. Sorry, I have to kind of increase my space. I need to be sure that that will be the last. Uh, I think uh, yes. there is an eighth one, that is not the last. So seven, we shall look at the transmission line. The transmission line. And uh, this causes uh, an interest into guided waves. You've always seen a, a dish with an LMB, uh, is it LMBD, something which is like a torch facing the dish. Then you have ever seen also another dish where the other thing is facing outwards, especially when it is about, uh, if it is a transmitted, uh, or like this MTN, boosters which are always put on the top of your also residence. There is always that torch is facing outwards. Means that you are trying to guide the waves outwards. And uh, under this part of guiding waves we shall look at transmission of microwaves. So should I say that microwaves are going to be done this this semester? They are part of the menu where you have to choose uh, the electives. You don't know. So these transverse electromagnetic and transverse magnetic, I'm not going to write them in their waves. 
And this is for, we look at for horror, for horror wave guides. And I'm planning that uh, maybe I can get some students who can work with me and we make a wave guide for my router to make sure that we boost the signal of the router and make it uh, maybe cover the whole campus for when the router is just here at physics. So I hope we shall be able to put it into practice. And then we shall look at uh, definitely when these waves are moving from one million to another, we need to know the boundary conditions. We have uh, boundary conditions for uh, dielectrics, but this is for metallic, for metallic wave guides. Then we shall look at all of rectangular wave guides. All of rectangular wave guides. Eigen functions. Eigen functions. And more integers. And then look at a uh, waveguide as a high pass, as a high pass filter. Now, when I talk of eigen functions, it's like if I talked of bases in in senior two. I mean, in senior one. Of course, I think there are bases in senior one, bases in senior two, in this year. Almost each of the classes has bases. But when you are being taught base 2, nobody talks about a computer. True or false? True. The guy comes and says in base 2, when you are calculating, you can only have 1 and a 0. A 0 and 1. Because you can't have the same number in the same base, nor can you have a higher number in the same. Base. And then he gives you some examples, and then he gives exercise and goes away. Now that a bunch of you are teachers to be, I would like to, to assure you that after my thorough thinking about our education system, I find out that our education system has no problem. Basically, we are okay. The curriculum is fine, the notes are okay, everything is okay. What is the problem? The problem is on the implementers. If you give me matoke, I'll cook it our way. Boil the matoke, get some stick, pound them up, and make my matoke either taste, I don't know how you would call it in the, in the language, in the best language. And I would be able to use this matoke to make or to eat my sauce, and I would be happy. If I give it to somebody here in the central, they will have to first get these things of the, uh, the matoke thing. You see, these are the these are the sticks of matoke, and then they will have to get this thing which they cut off, split it into pieces, pour it inside the saucepan, get the uh, banana leaves. They are steaming, and I wanted to test, have a test. <laughs> but we are all cooking the same. You give it to someone, I don't know what the Easterners do, whether they just uh, boil it or what, I don't know. Now, but we are cooking the same food. The, the way of cooking here uh, in our education system is the problem. The food is okay. We use Tom Duncan, it is used in UK. We use uh, Nerikon and Parker, it is not published by... Uh, Person from here. We use back horse, it is not published by Uganda. We use Bostock, it is not published by Uganda. Every calculation in the Bostock is international. The problem is the cooker. You go to class, you say, when you go to your name, calculate this number, get this answer, and you will pass. See you tomorrow. <laughs> so 
So what is your purpose in class? I've interacted with a lot of people in the social network who are complaining. Ah, ah, this education uh, system is stupid. There is no problem with the education system. The problem is people who go to teaching because it is a job. Because they want to earn money. Then we have people who have schools who are entrepreneurs and all they want is to get money from the schools. If you decided to propose in school that you want to introduce some new way of teaching, like come with the demonstrations, ask some money to make some demos, uh, a student will say that teacher, you know, he talks a lot. Imagine if I was still teaching. This, the way I teach is the way I used to teach in secondary. And I gave up. So the, the, if you can think about it closely, of how my talk is prepared in the West, Prepared in the center, the Okaum Okalo. If you look at the way these things are prepared, like for us, we, we use millet for only this hot porridge. Here they make it porridge for cold drinking, you know. Then the ones I think in the east make uh, uh, some brew from the meat. But it is the same millet, you know. And it's the same period. We make a job out of it. So I, the, I want to know one Uganda. You see, when you grow, when, I, I think most of Ugandans now are at the teenage, at the adolescent stage, education wise. You know, you have finished the air level, you have finished campus, you can be on the social media, log in Facebook. That is, I can call it education. Uh, adolescent state. So you now what you are trying now to, uh, to to kind of disprove everyone. I can look for a file from US and read their even constitution. Uh, ah, these these things here are fake. But do you ask yourselves, <coughs> the publisher of Nelly Conan Parker is a Ugandan, <coughs> Boston, Humphrey. These books are from abroad. <coughs> so it means they are not they are not written there that published for Uganda. They are they are written there. <laughs> of course, those are the problem people who now went into the, the American and started picking only for exam. Okay, so we now go to the last bit, which is number eight. And then uh, under number eight, we shall look at uh, radiation of electromagnetic waves. Radiation of electromagnetic waves. And here we shall look at uh, Retired, retarded scalar potentials, retarded scalar and vector potentials, electric dipole radiation. Point is vector. 
then uh, the power regulation. Power regulation for rainfall. For rainfall slurs. Let's go with this people. So we, we need to know the references and the two references which I will use uh, basically two books which are in front of you in addition to my notes and probably I will make sure that both of them are available in uh, soft copy. Last year when I taught the uh, mechanics, I gave them everything. All the books that are available, I made sure they get them online. So, references. Uh, one, introduction to electrodynamics. Introduction to electrodynamics by David J. So then we look at uh, electromagnetic fields. I mean, the next uh, uh, reference is electromagnetic fields and waves by Paul Rollen and Castle. Paul Rollen, I need to get it right here. Yeah. Rollen and Castle. They are, they are actually three of them. So, you don't worry. I'll make sure that these copies are on Mwere for free. All books, all the books, you'll be able to read through the book at the comfort of your computer. And uh, in case you want to get your own other copies, you can go to http and uh, find book. FI, which is like book find dot oh. You can also find my video lectures at uh, YouTube or YouTube dot com forward slash home concerts. So you'll be able to get most other video lectures about the course on YouTube and see how I was teaching last year and the jokes I made, the emphasis I made and there are also a few lectures of electricity and medicine. I don't know whether of your time. Okay, so now we have a, a good overview. If we don't cover a section during the course, don't run around saying we, we listed this part. We, a course outline is to show you what the course should entail. Whether the class will work may cover everything. At your age, you are only supposed to be told what you can do. Whether you do it or not is your own choice. Any questions? If there are no questions, if I can have my list, and then we meet again tomorrow at 12 and start the course straight away.